Hi, and welcome to episode eight of Understanding Darktable. This time we're going to look at the copy locally function, which can be found in the selected images module. I've still got these four images that I shot in my backyard last week. And the idea of this particular feature of Darktable is, let's assume that on your desktop machine at home, you have maybe a five terabyte external drive and all of your images generally live on that external drive. And let's assume you've gone out, you've done a big shoot, you've come home, you've got you know, hundreds of images to work with. And let's say you know that you're going on the road, you're gonna take your laptop and you can do some of the processing while you're traveling. So you quickly go through the hundreds of images that you've shot and you choose the ones that you want to take with you to process while you're traveling. The idea is that you can create a local copy of those images on your laptop, process them while you're away from home, and the XMP sidecar files which get created to reflect all of the changes that you've made to those local copies whilst you're traveling will automatically get resynced with the versions of the original images which live on your external hard drive at home once you get home and attach your laptop to your external drive or attach your external drive to your laptop. So let's look at that in practice and see how that would work. For the purposes of demonstration, I am going to assume that this USB key is the external hard drive on which my photos always live. So to demonstrate that, I will plug the USB key in. And what I'm going to do is remove these four images from Darktable. These are the versions that live on my hard drive. So I'm gonna remove them from here so they no longer uh, pointing to those images that were in that 2018 0705 folder and I'm going to jump over to my file browser and this USB key I've called travel just for the purposes of this demonstration so I will copy this folder which is where those four raw files live along with their XMP files I'm going to copy that folder over to the USB key. Now that that's done, and just so I don't confuse Darktable, I'm gonna rename the version of the folder that lives on my actual internal hard drive here at home. So now the images live over here on this USB key, which is supposedly our external hard drive. So what I can do now is import that folder from this key, this folder, click open, and now those images are imported into Darktable, and if we look at the image information panel, we can see that they are all referencing that USB key that I've attached to my system, which is supposedly my five terabyte external drive, right? So these are the versions of the photos that I've brought home from my photo shoot, but I know I'm gonna travel and I just wanna take a subset of these images with me so that I can process them while I'm on the road. So for that purpose, we will just choose these last two images and we will select copy locally, creating local copies of two images. Now on Linux, what that does is copies them to file system, home, username, dot cache, dark table. And what we've got here are these two raw files which have an MD5 hash of the full path and file name of the image to which they are referenced. That way Linux always knows exactly which raw file goes where. As we start to create modifications to these images, the local copied versions, which are here in you know, our file system, new XMP sidecar files will get created, 
which can later be synced with the versions that live on our external hard drive, aka my USB key. So, when we look at Darktable, we can see that those two images now have this little white dot above them near where you would normally see the color labels. And that white dot is telling us that these are local copies of images which normally live somewhere else, in this case on a USB key. As well as that white dot on the thumbnail, you will also find in the tagging module that any image that's a local copy will have a tag of dark table pipe local copy. So theoretically, I'm now away from home. And to further promote that idea, I will eject that USB key. So now the USB key is no longer attached to the computer. We're away from home and we're working theoretically on our laptop. So what I can do now is I can go into these images and yeah, monochrome, why not? Let's do that. And on this other image, let's do something super crazy, like we'll reduce the exposure, not that it was really a problem. Let's do a, yeah, 16 by nine crop, why not? And we'll just crop in on those three lemons there. Maybe go a bit further. Okay, so now I've made some alterations to both of these images. And if we look at this path to, you know, my file system, home, bruce.cache slash dark table, we can see that alongside those two raw files, the local copy versions, are these new XMP sidecar files which contain all the information regarding the changes we've made. So let's just add a tag to these as well. Why not? Let's go Springfield. Okay, yep, Australia, New South Wales, Central Coast, Springfield. Copy those there. So those images are now tagged with Springfield, the fact they've been changed, the fact that they're raw files, and the fact that they are local copies. And that's the same for the other image as well. Okay, so now I've arrived back home from my travel. I've processed all of the images from the big shoot that I did, and now I want to resync with the external hard drive at home. This is a beautiful system. Even though I've never personally had a need to use it, I think it's very clever. So we reattach our external hard drive to our computer. And what I will do is I'll close Darktable because in the real world, yes, you'd have closed Darktable and shut down your laptop on your way home. So I've arrived home, I fire up my laptop, I attach the external hard drive, and then I fire up Darktable. And watch what happens. Two local copies have been synchronized. So what that means is Darktable has recognized that these local copies have now been matched up with the original files that existed on the external hard drive. And because Darktable has noticed that the laptop had XMP sidecar files with a later date stamp than the versions which were on the external hard drive, it has automatically synchronized those files. And we can prove that by looking at the timestamp on the local copies. They were timestamped at 9.54 and 38 seconds in the morning. Let's jump over to our external hard drive, aka the USB key, and we have a look at those last two images and we can see that those XMP sidecar files were updated at 9.55 and 50 seconds this morning, where the other two versions haven't been touched for five days. They were last updated on the 12th of July. So you can see that what has happened is Darktable has copied the XMP sidecar files back to the original storage medium so that the original raw files will now reflect all of the changes that we made whilst we were on the road with the laptop and doing some edits. 
Now, if we jump back into Darktable, what we can do is you notice that we're still working on local copies. They've still got these white dots above the thumbnails. So what we do is we select both of these images, we go to the selected images module, and we click on resync local copy. And you can see from the text tooltip there, synchronize the images XMP, which has already been done, and remove the local copy. So we click that, the two white dots disappear from the thumbnails. We will notice in the tagging module, they no longer feature the tag local copy. And if we jump back to the file manager, we can see from our folder here, once I get there, that those local copy images and their XMP files have been removed from the file system. So now there are just the versions which live on the external hard drive over here with their newly modified XMP sidecar files. Pretty cool. And as you can see from the thumbnails, the images reflect the changes that I made whilst I was out on the road with my laptop. Okay, so that's how the local copy feature works in Darktable. I personally have never had a need to use it, but I think it's a pretty cool feature, and if the day ever comes where I do need to use it, I will certainly use it. I think we've pretty much covered most of the things in the light table view that we need to cover for now. The things that we haven't covered, I want to wait until we've done a little bit of image processing. So in the next episode, we'll start to look at the darkroom modules and what we can do with image processing. Talk to you soon.